So this is part four of matrices. In this part, uh, we are going to talk about matrix, matrix multiplication. So the goal of matrices, when we want to multiply them, how to multiply two matrices, and also what are the properties of matrix multiplication. All right. So to be able to multiply two matrices, it is very important to make sure that the dimensions are proper. So if you have matrix A, which is N by N, you can multiply it by matrix B, which is N by P. What does this mean? The number of columns in A is equal to the number of rows in B. And the result is matrix C, which is M by P. All right. The expected dimension from uh, the given product, the product is given by the outer two values. That's what happens here. For example, if we have matrix A with dimension five multiplied by seven, multiplied by matrix A, B, which is dimension of seven multiplied by two, the result is going to be five by two, the outer value. But now the question is how to find elements of this uh, matrix multiplication. So let's say, Matrix A is dimension of N by M. And matrix B is dimension M by P. So as you can see here, M is the common value here. So each element of the multiplication matrix is sigma k from one to m, the number of columns in A, A sub i k multiplied by B sub k j. All right. Uh, again, here, instead of using this equation, you can intuitively use the rows of the first matrix and identify the columns of the second matrix. And what we do for element one, one, we multiply row one of A by column one of B. So this one and this one. So zero, zero, plus two multiplied by two, plus minus one, multiplied by minus one, which is five. As you can see, we have five here. Right. The same for element one, two, you multiply the first row and second column, which is going to give you this value. For element two, one, you multiply the second row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. And finally, for element two, two, you multiply second row of the first matrix, second column of the second matrix, which is minus two, minus two, plus one, multiplied by one, plus one, multiplied by four, plus one, plus one, which is six. This is what we have here. All right. So uh, before going uh, over more examples, let's take a look at the properties of matrix multiplication. Let's define matrix A to be an M by N matrix. Matrix B and C, they have appropriate dimension. So what do we mean by appropriate? We mean if we have A multiplied by B, B is something like N multiplied by C. If you have A multiplied by C, the same. All right. So the first property is associated. So 
Native property of matrix multiplication. All right. So when we have matrix A multiplied by B, C, this is equal to A, B multiplied by C. So let's talk about the dimensions a little bit. So if matrix A is M by N, then matrix B should be N by P, so that we can make sure these two values are equal, or the number of columns in A and the number of rows in B are equal. And then what's going to be dimension of matrix C? should be P multiplied by, let's say, T. So what's the reason? The number of columns in B should be the number of rows in C. And what's going to be our final answer, the dimension of this collective multiplication is going to be M multiplied by T, the outer value. All right, so this is the associative property of matrix multiplication. Second property is left distributed. Then we have matrix A multiplied by B plus D. This is equal to matrix A multiplied by matrix B plus AC. Let's talk about dimensions. A is N by N, then B should be N by P, and C also should be N by P. What's the reason for that? Because we are adding matrix B and matrix C, which means they should have the same dimension. Then we have the right distributed property, which says B plus C multiplied by A is equal to BA plus CA. Let's see what are the dimensions here. If A is M by N, then C should be P by M and B should be P by N. What is the reason for this? Here you have M, here you have N. So the number of columns in C or B should be equal to the number of rows in matrix A. All right. Uh, the next uh, definition, the next property is about associative property of scalars in matrix uh, multiplication. So let's define a scalar alpha associated property of scalars in matrix multiplication. So when you have alpha multiplied by matrix A multiplied by B, this is equal to when you multiply alpha by matrix A first and then uh, multiply the outcome to B or A multiplied by the scalar alpha and matrix B. So these are all equivalent. And last but not the least, the identity. Identity for matrix multiplication. What is that? It tells us that I of M, M dimensional, the M dimensional identity matrix multiplied by M, which is M by N, is equal to matrix A, which is M by N, multiplied by I of dimension N, and these are all equal to matrix A. So these are some of the properties. Uh, so in order to prove each of these properties, you simply can refer to the definition of matrix multiplication. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, write the proof for uh, the associative uh, property. So what was the associative property? So saying that alpha multiplied by AB is equal to alpha A multiplied by B or A multiplied by alpha B. Right, proof. So we define A, which is an M by N matrix, and we show each element of A as AIJ. We do the same for B. 
Dij and D is N by P matrix. And alpha is a real scalar value. So now we want to find element So what we do, we write down alpha and we try to expand this multiplication based on the definition. What was the definition? Sigma k from one to p, p is the one to p. B, k, j. All right, so it's going to be sigma k from one to p. Now I bring alpha inside sigma and uh, at parentheses here. So let's first bring alpha a i k b k j. And at this stage, I'm going to add parentheses here because what I'm looking for is alpha a. So I want to extract alpha a out of this. Sigma k from one to p. Actually, I think we can just uh, write the close form here. So now we have alpha a. Alpha a multiplied by b elements ij. With the same. Uh, to, uh, with the same trick that we use here, we can bring alpha here. So what we have, this is also equal to sigma k from one to p, a sub i k, alpha b sub k j. What is this? This is nothing but alpha b, which is a multiplied by alpha b i j. So the proof is complete because alpha multiplied by a b is equal to alpha a multiplied by b or a multiplied by alpha b. You can use the definition of matrix multiplication to prove the other scenarios as well. All right, uh, let's see one more example just to have an idea of uh, how we can, without looking at that definition and by just looking at the rows and columns of a and b, can multiply this. Let's say A is A11, A12, A13, A2. A41, A42, A43. So A is a four by three matrix. And matrix B is three by two. So we have B11, B12, B21, B22, B31, B32. B is three by two. So the outcome based on the rule that we said first, we check. The number of uh, columns in A is three. The number of rows in B are also three, so we can multiply them. And the outcome is going to be four by two. So C is a four by two matrix. So matrix C, four by two. C11, C12, C21, C22, C31, C32, C41, C42. All right, so now we want to find elements of matrix C. Uh, as I said, first, we are going to find the rows of matrix A. So this is row one, row two, row three, and row four, and uh, the columns of matrix B. Column one, column two. All right. So element one, C11 one, one, is equal to row one of A multiplied by column one of B. 
What does that mean? Actually, this is the inner product here. A11, B11 plus A12, B21 plus A13, B31. Element two of matrix C uh, is going to be C12. It's again row one of matrix A multiplied by column two of matrix B. So it's going to be A11, B12 plus A12, B22 plus A13, B32. Uh, element two one of C. Now we go to the second row of A. Row two of A. So these are for A, these are for B. Row two, column one. For C22, two, two, we have again row two of matrix A, column two of matrix B. For C31, we have row three of matrix A, column one of matrix B. For C32, we have row three of matrix A and column two of matrix B. C41, row four of matrix A, column one of matrix B. And finally for C42, we have the last row of matrix A, row four of matrix A, and the last column of matrix B. This is how you can intuitively find all of the elements for your matrix multiplication. And it can be generalized to all dimensions. All right, uh, but uh, we want to use this in programming, right? So let's take a look at the Python and MATLAB codes, scripts that can implement the matrix multiplication. In Python, you can use the, the NumPy library uh, and use this command, this is script numpy or np dot matmal a and b where a and b are what does this mean it means the number of columns in a and number of rows in b should be equal in matlab you can use the command a star b so it automatically finds the multiplication of matrices a and b also you can use the command m times a and B in parentheses, this also finds the multiplications of matrices A and B. All right, so that was all for matrix matrix multiplication. Uh, in this part, first we talked about matrix, matrix multiplication. We said that what matters is the dimensions and the result is going to be m by p. Then uh, we talked about uh, the generalized form. So cij is equal to sigma k from one to n. A i k b k j. And we do this for all dimensions. And then we talked about properties of matrix multiplication. And finally, we solved some example. And also we learned that in Python, we can use NumPy, matrix multiplication A and B, and in MATLAB, you can use either A star B or M. Or matrices are 